This is the Wikstrand. Oh, uh, and um, today marks my 300th episode. And what I'm going to do today is I was rather unprepared for this because I thought it was way ahead, but it turns out it has to be shot today and it has to be edited today and uploaded today. So I scrambled and I came up with this statistics and analytics of the Wikstrand. Magnificently large. A collection of movies. So let's take a look at, at some statistics and analytics, shall we? While I try this, um, in my opinion, rather okay Espumante from um, Portugal. So take care and watch my 300 episodes, shall we? Everybody. This is the Wikstrand. Yeah, time really flies. So this is my 300th video I've ever done and I originally thought that I had more time because I had other plans originally but plans do change sometimes when it get in contact with reality so I had to, you know, scramble. And I came up with this little thing. Now I have a movie list. An almost infinite number of movies that I have seen over my decades of watching movies, loving movies, and enjoying movies. Uh, and uh, I have, you know, gathered a fair amount of absolutely bonkers statistics over the years. So I made a little bit of a list to see, well, if I could squeeze something out of it. And turns out, I can. So this is just going to be me shattering off about... Um, you know, statistics about me watching movies. It's not going to be a list. It's not going to be, you know, the best of this and the best of that. It's more going to be numbers and uh, stuff like that. And I thought, well, it might be fun for somebody, at least for me. So, because, uh, so the average movie, having watched I've seen thousands of movies from, you know, the Buster Keatons to Lost Weeks, The Suicide Squad, which by the way, I thought was a really, 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 really good movie. But is there a movie that could be, you know, called an average movie out of everything? Well, it is an American movie, of course, and it is a comedy or an action movie. And it is 109 minutes long, which I think is probably one of the average length of a movie. Even though I've not seen all the movies in eternity, but this is probably one of the you know, most common length. And uh, it has a rating of 54. One movie that actually has almost all of these ones is actually Rush Hour, which is an action comedy which, you know, takes out all the boxes. And uh, it basically has that. So the most average movie I've ever seen is Rush Hour. It's not a, you know, very good movie. It's, it's pretty okay, but I think the sequel is better. But at least it's better than, you know, the Rush Hour 3, which I actually reviewed at one point. So that's one thing. The best years. I judge movie years of the 10 best movies released on that particular year. Usually a normal year, you know, the the 10 best movies combined ratings would get somewhere between 800 and let's say 60 to 900. Everything above that is considered a very good year. Everything below that is considered a pretty, pretty terrible year. But which one was the best? I've always thought that the best movie year of all time is 1997. Mainly because some of my absolute favorite movies comes from that year. But it turns out that there is actually seven years that is better than, you know, um, 1997. Because, you know, the 10th best year of all time is 1999. You know, home to such movies as The Matrix, Existence, um, Titus, uh, Galaxy Quest. It's a bunch of really, really awesome movies in, you know, released in 1999. But the ninth best year is, of course, 2017 with movies like Logan, Thor Ragnarök, Bahubali, uh, The Villainous, and um, what's more is it? Oh, Blade of the Immortal, of course. But then we, of course, have the aforementioned 1997 with movies like, you know, The Game, Starship Troopers, uh, Ellie Confidential, Face Off, and you know, there is just a ton of fantastic movies. Oh, uh, Life is Beautiful is also an absolutely 
stunning movie and you know all of them released 1997 jesus sweet jesus christ what a fucking year it was but 2004 was also a fantastic year like uh, uh, a long engagement team america world police layer cake the born supremacy lots of fantastic movies there too and 2016 with movies like rogue one uh, arrival uh, what else is there uh, handmaiden uh, Captain America Civil War, there's so many fantastic movies, you know, in 2016. And then of course we have 2007 with The Mist, The Born Ultimatum, uh, Hot Fuss and Death at a Funeral, just to mention a few of them. And then, and then we of course we have 2009 with movies like The Inglorious Bastards, uh, District 9, uh, the Battle of Red Cliff is a ash, actually a fantastic year. And 2005 with fantastic movies such as Sin City, V for Vendetta, Munich, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. It's a freaking stacked year. But the second best of all time is of course 2014 with movies like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Happy New Year, Raid 2, um, Gone Girl, uh, Predestination, uh, What We Do in the Shadows. It's a fucking lot all of them crumbles before the absolute might of the best year of all time 2006 where we saw movies like apocalypto the prestige the curse of the golden flower children of men the list just goes on and on and on there is a particular reason to why uh, 2006 is so such a fantastic thing but we'll get to there in a second and in case you're curious as it stands right now, 2020 will go down in history as the worst year since 1969. And that is just because I haven't seen as many movies from 1969 as I've done 2020. It's a truly woeful year. I'm not going to, you know, gloat too much about the more, you know, bad years that has been. But weak ones you can include 2010, 1998, 1993, 1990, 1985. 1983 and for instance 1978 geography it, w it won't come as a big surprise to anybody with a brain cell that i you know have seen more american movies than you know any other country so it that will affect you know where the movies i see comes from but it, it got me thinking if i would have done a pie chart i'm not smart enough to actually figure out how to get a pie chart into this video but if i had would have done it it would probably be a very you know one-sided pie chart but i'm gonna do it anyway to you know give you a little bit of a an idea of uh, the geography of uh, where i'm watching movies from with 0.41 percent it is australia and the pacific and that is of course you know some australian movies some new zealand movies but i've never seen anything you know I don't know, even know if you know Fiji or Vanuatu or you know those countries even have a film industry. But I've never seen a movie from them. But it's not a very you know big slice of the pie, you could say. Three point fifty three percent of all my movies I've seen comes from Asia, mostly from India, Japan, and uh, China, and you know some other countries are sprinkled in here as well. But it is it is a combination of costume dramas, martial arts movies, and action movies. And that's really about it. 0.16% of all movies I have done comes from South America. And uh, most of them are, you know, movies like uh, uh, Bakurao or, uh, you know, City of God or uh, Tropa de Elite or... And the Uruguayan prison movie 12 Years of Night or whatever it was called. And, you know, plus a bunch of other stuff. But it's a very select few movies that comes from you know south america but there is even fewer that comes from africa that has only 0.09 percent of my entire list and uh, basically it is a couple of egyptian movies i've seen a couple of south african movies that you know is a bit uh, obscure and uh, a nigerian a historical drama called Invasion 1898 that was pretty bad. I would like to see more African movies, but uh, it's kind of difficult to, to find them and seek them out. But uh, we'll see where we go. 12.31% of all movies comes from Europe. And because I'm Swedish, that means that some of them, of course, come from Sweden. And But I've also seen a lot of Norwegian, Danish, uh, French, Italian 
German movies, Spanish movies, uh, UK movies and stuff like that. So it represents a pretty big um, uh, slice of the, of the you know, pie chart, more than I actually would have expected. But uh, we do know that we're coming to the big one now. But 69.42% of all movies comes from North America. And this includes some Canadian movies, some Mexican movies, but of course a absolute storming amount of American movies. But you, if you are good at math, you realize that there is a couple of percentage that is missing. To be exact, it is 14.05%. And these represent the multi-continental movies, such as, you know, the uh, American British movies that, you know, comes across every once in a while. The, the American French movies, the American Chinese movies, the American Japanese movies. Whenever I come across those movies, they have to be put in a separate thing. But uh, which one is my 10 most viewed countries, you think? Well, I have the answer for that, of course. Number 10 is Spain. Number 9 is South Korea. Number 8 is Italy. And number 7 is India. Number 6 is Japan. Number 5 is France. Number 4, to my utmost surprise, was actually China. Number 3, Sweden. Number 2, Britain. And number 1, of course, with far more than half of the uh, movies was, of course, United States. Ratings, zeros and 100. I mentioned before that the average movie I rated is 54. 54 is, you know, of course, as average as you possibly can get. But there is a huge amount of, you know, movies above and below this. But you cannot go any lower than zero. And those movies are, you know, something else. I have yet to actually review a movie with a zero rating, but I actually filmed a review for a zero last week. It's going to come out in a couple of weeks and you will probably understand why it got a zero rating, but it is used so sparingly. Fewer than 0.09% of all movies I have ever seen has gotten this absolute rotten, nuclearly bad rating. The first one that ever came was 1955. And after that, not a single movie came out until 1989, uh, you know, that got that, that, that type of ratings. And, you know, it has gotten, you know, a couple of, of them here and there. But since 2012, not a single movie has been released that bear a zero rating. A couple of movies have been fairly close, but it has been a drought for nine years now. Uh, and uh, I hope it continues because I always get really sad whenever I watch a movie I have to give a zero rating to. And oh boy, there has been some terrible you know, movies throughout the years. But I'm not going to you know, name any names. If I ever do some kind of a worst of all time list, you will probably, you know, be unsurprised by a lot of them. And there will some that will surprise you and there will some that really annoys you. But uh, I can tell you one thing. When I release my zero rating movie in a couple of weeks, you will say, well, what else can you give it? But then, of course, you have the accolade of accolades, the 100 rating. The 100 rating is even rarer, 0.07% of all movies that I have ever seen has been granted this most prestigious of ratings. I have actually reviewed two uh, with, with this rating so far. It was Barry Lyndon and The Prestige. And uh, I stand by that those movies are absolutely flawless. The first one came 1969, but then there was this big drought between 1977 and 1991, which is the biggest gap so far between movies that has gotten the, the 100 accolade. A surprising amount of movies were actually released in the, the 70s that got an a, a 100 because, you know, at that, that particular time they were really experimental sometimes and sometimes it worked and sometimes it absolutely did not. Only one year in movie history has seen two 100 being released the same year. 
and that is 2006, which is one of the reasons why that movie is the best movie year of all time. And uh, unfortunately, since 2015, not a single movie has been released uh, that garnered a 100 rating. The closest anybody has come since then was 2016 with Arrival, which I still would consider the best movie that has been released since the 2015 movie that got 100. I think you can figure out which movie that is, considering what types of movies I like. It was also a movie I had been waiting for for about 22 years. Genres. When I, when I did this, uh, I was so certain that, you know, action movies was going to be the biggest of the genres because I love action movies so much. But it turns out action movies only represents about 20% uh, of my entire uh, list. Now, of course, they have their sub-genres such as, you know, action sci-fi, action thrillers, action comedies and stuff like that, which are not, you know... 100% pure action movies. If you want to get really technical, about 13% of all movies I've seen are action movies. Thrillers and comedies actually took up the bulk of the whole thing. Together, they garnered an absolutely storming 30% of the entire list, which was far more than I you know, would have anticipated. Another thing that kind of surprised me was the fact that I thought... now. Anybody who, who knows me knows that I don't like musicals, I don't like horror films, and I don't like uh, romantic comedies. And I thought that this was going to you know, prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that this was the case, that they were going to have a far worse average rating than you know, movies I thought were you know, the best, like fantasy movies, science fiction, action films, stuff like that. But it turns out that was not the case at all. You see, they, they were kind of close to each other. Just a little bit of an example. The average romantic comedy scored a somewhat not so impressive uh, 41 points. But the average action movie only scored an average of 47. Now, I have seen far more action movies than romantic comedies, but that was still a stunning figure that was kind of, huh, that was weird. But there was a trend when I was going through this. Comic book movies, westerns, uh, sci-fi movies, war adventures and, you know, matinee adventures were the type of movies with the highest average and, of course, uh, romantic comedies, horrors and musicals were, you know, lower, but not that much lower, which was very surprising. It was sort of, huh, didn't see that one coming. Length. Is a longer movie better than a shorter movie? I've always thought that a longer movie, generally speaking, is better than a shorter movie because you have more time to tell your story. But the counter argument is, of course, that if you have a too long movie, then, you know, you have to add the subplots and the things get stale and the, the movie can get really, really dragging and plodding. Uh, unrelated picture of Zack Snyder's Justice League. But I was kind of curious, A. Eh? Is it actually so that longer movies are better in my opinion? Well, I actually have absolute proof of if I was correct in my assumption, so... The short films, aka movies that is from 63 minutes to 89 minutes, they represent 13.08% of all the movies I have watched, and they get an average of 41 points in ratings. Now, there is a lot of really terrible movies here, you know, that drags the uh, rating down, you know, these cheap uh, knockoffs of better movies and uh, bad comedies that uh, aren't too good and, you know, bad action films and stuff like that. There, there are, you know, a couple of movies that are really, really, really good, like Monty Python and the Holy Grail, the Norwegian movie Escape, which for some reason uh, clocks in at one hour, 15 minutes and is art and is tight as fuck. Uh, but I was actually surprised how actually low the rating was for, the, for this category. The next category is what I would consider the average length of a movie. It is the 90 to 119 minute movies. They are unsurprisingly the most common of movies with 61.05%. 
And here we have, you know, the majority of all movies that has been made and, and they get an average of 52 uh, points. So more than half of all movies can be traced back to, to this length. Then we have the long movies. Now we're talking 2 hours to 2 hours and 29 minutes. These long movies represent 20.77% uh, and they have an average rating of 64, which kind of surprised me because I've seen a lot of rather terrible you know, long movies throughout the years where I thought that, Jesus, you could have cut this down way, way, way down. But um, turns out that uh, these movies can sometimes bring in the really big ratings. Then we're of course entering the super long movies. Now we're talking two and a half hours to three hours and 19 minutes. And they only represent 4.36% of all movies that I've ever seen. But they actually pulled in an impressive 69 uh, average of rating, which is more than I assumed. This is of course where the really massive movies are you know, hidden away like uh, fantastic movies like Blade Runner 2049 or The Godfather or stuff like that. But there is one small little category of movies, not a very big one, but that is even more impressive when it comes to its length. And uh, we're of course talking about the epic movies. With only 0.72%, they are the 200 plus minute movies. They're actually a slight step down, 68 in average, but still it proves kind of that longer is better, at least to, to some degree. I mean, there are not so many movies uh, in this category that I can, you know, find a, you know, a, a thread throughout. Now, of course, in this category, I had to include uh, you know, these movies that came out, you know, a few years ago when Hollywood decided let's release the same movie but we've spliced it in half and then we can charge twice like you know, the Hunger Games or the last Harry Potter movies and stuff like that and, you know, Breaking Dawn for some reason. But here we also have fantastic movies such as uh, Bahubali and uh, The Irishman and um, uh, the, the Soviet version of uh, War and Peace, which clocks in at nearly seven hours. It is a massive, massive movie. But I had one more thing that I wanted to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt, because I have always been of the uh, mindset that comedies need to be short. A short comedy is a good comedy. A long comedy is death. I recently saw the movie Trainwreck and believe me when I say that 124 minutes did not do that movie any services whatsoever. So I assumed, I very much was certain of the fact that the longer the comedies, the lower the rating was going to be. So I tested the thing because my opinion is that a comedy that crosses the 100 minute mark lives on borrowed time. I was dead sure that comedies that exceeds 100 minutes get a lower rating than a shorter comedy. I was wrong. Turns out that uh, they actually have a higher rating, which surprised me a lot. I have no idea how they were able to you know, f do this one. 60% of all comedies I've seen is below 100 minutes and uh, they have an average of 44 rating. 40% is above 100 minutes and they have an average of 51. It's not a big difference but it was still a big surprise. My only explanation for this very unexpected result is I think that most of the comedies on my list that is very long and in my opinion very very shitty I think probably has been labeled by me as drama comedies and therefore isn't included in this list but I don't know if that is the whole story but what are you gonna do? Just a, just a little bit of an example. Crazy Stupid Love is one of the worst comedies I've ever seen. It is almost two hours long and it felt like fucking five. But uh, I don't think that I counted that as a comedy. I think I counted that as a dramedy and therefore it's not on this list. So that might be a part of the explanation 
or I'm just flat out wrong. I don't know. So this was my 300th episode and uh, I'll see you next time of course from well so and so when I review such and such. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.